Okay, thank you for that special. We shall once more kneel down to out of prayer. <clears throat> kind and loving Father, we once again come before thee. We ask of thy spirit to be with us, to guide us as we study in just any prayer. Yes, we were saying that God has a controversy with us according to Hosea chapter 4 verse 1. God said he has a controversy. Controversy means a strife a dispute or a quarrel. God is quarreling with us. And why is he quarreling with us? Why is he quarreling with us? What does he want from us? If we go to Exeriasis, forgive me, I don't know how to pronounce that book, but I think you know Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. Chapter 12, it says verse 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of who? He's saying that we should fear God. We should fear God. That is one thing. And then keep what? Keep his commandments. Now, a question may come. What is to fear God? I'm interested in this word. Fearing God. What is to fear God? The good thing the Bible, as we learned in this day, mirrors rules. Eh? The Bible is its own what? Interpreter. It will give us what fearing God does what? Means. We shall open our book and we go to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs 1, verse 7. And it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Here he's saying the fear of the God, the fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom. Fear of who? Of God is what? Beginning of knowledge. And we shall open the same book in Proverbs 9. So here the fear of the God is the beginning. Fear in God is the beginning of what? Proverbs chapter 9. Same book. We shall read in verse 10. It says... The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. 
here in saying the fear of the Lord is what? Beginning of what? Of wisdom. But again, if we read in Proverbs chapter 2, he combines these two and he puts it together. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 5. If we read it, it says, Then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the beginning of what? Of knowledge. Then, then shall do what? Are you following me? He says, Then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. So the fear of God is knowledge of who? You can safely conclude that the fear in God is having knowledge of who? Are we together? You can safely conclude that the fear of the Lord is having knowledge of God. Another question is, do you and me have the knowledge of God? Do we have the knowledge of God? What is our first message? Because we are combining all these things together. What does the first message say? That is Revelation 14, verse 7. Revelation 14, verse 7, it says, Say with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. The first thing the angel says is to do what? Fear God. That means that within ourselves, we no longer have the knowledge of God. We no longer know who our God is. That's why the first angel comes. And the first thing he tells us, he's telling us that we should know who we worship. Is it the last thing he's saying in this verse 7? And worship him. So do we know who our God is? But is it really important to know who God is? Is it important? We shall go back to the book of Hosea. Hosea chapter 4. When we read in verse 6, it says, I Hosea, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. It says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou has rejected knowledge, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou has forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget what? Why are we destroyed? And what is knowledge? The fear of God. People we are destroyed. And the Hosea is saying here that because we have just rejected, what is rejected? 
We just refused. We don't want to know. That means we have a lot of opportunities, a lot of ways to know who our God is. But we've done what? We've rejected. The same book was there, chapter 6, verse 6. It says, For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. What does God require? He requires mercy, and he said, I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than one of them. So God wants us to know him. So it is important. God wants us to do what? Know him personally and physically. And why is it important if you know him? Why is it important? If you read John chapter 17. John chapter 17, verse 3, tells us why it is important to know who? To know God. He says, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true who? And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast done what? That is how important it is. If we know him, then we shall do what? What do we have if we know God? We shall have life with him. Is there any one of us here who doesn't want to get life with him? I think that's the reason why all of us are here. We want to get that. If we want to get that, then we have to have the knowledge, to have to know who our God is. In Second Peter, the book of Second Peter, chapter one, verse two, he said we are going to read more of the Bible than our own Second Peter. Chapter 1, verse 2. The Bible says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. If we know God, what multiplies to us? Grace and peace multiply us. If we do what? If we know God. Now, if we know Him, what is involved in knowing God? What is involved in knowing God? Knowing God involves at least three things. Not as most, but at least what? At least three things are involved in knowing God. The first one is no. Who God is.
and how do we know who God is? We shall open the book of Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter one and verse twelve. And it says, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against this day. What is Paul saying, telling us here? He knows who he is. Do you know who you have believed? Because in this world we pass through different circumstances. And these different circumstances make us either to be true Christians or hypocrites. Uh, you can see me here and see me that, that, uh, as if I'm a man who fears God, but when circumstances come which force me to do something, I yield in. But all you say is that the forgiveness of God is in the Somewhat more. What do you mean as we? How are we? Do we know who we believe? I was sharing during my time with my brother, and he was telling me that if you know God, there's nothing which can hinder you to do anything. He was sharing with me that one time he had only 15k in his pocket, and somebody called him. He wanted 10,000. And yet for him, he has only 15. So as the one, what do you do? He was hoping to use that money for transport and something at home. And then he sees what will come to me. If I'm the one, I could say, my dear, I'm broke. I don't have money. But because he knew or he knows who his God is, on that 15, he sent him the 10K, and he made it only 5K, which could only take him up to home. And he reached home with, the five, with, with nothing, because the 5K was the first one. And now when money came, he was thinking, how can I go to work? And then as he checked on his phone, that was a message that we received 100k. And then somebody called, Hey, my dear good friend, you know, I will, I've been thinking, this man of yours, I've played with it. And he was like, What? So if we know who our God is, the fact he was telling you that when you have money, God has the reason why you have that money. Don't stay with it. Because you might be happy. 1,000, you think is the only thing you have, and somebody comes to you because God has sent him that he, you can be that woman, he has your 500. He asks you for 500, and you say, my dear, I have that. And it's true, that happens to us. But if you know who our God is, then there's nothing that can do what? That can hinder us to do anything. Number two, we have to know his way. We have to know his ways. We shall read in Exodus 33. Exodus 33, verse 13 and 18. Verse 13 says, 
Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy what? Thy people. What was, what, what was Moses saying here? He said he wanted to know who God is. And verse 18 says, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. They will say, show me your way. And I say, show me thy what? Thy glory. Knowing God involves know who he is, know his ways, to, to know his glory, and what is his glory? When God came to Moses, what did he proclaim? In Exodus 34, verse 6 and 7. 34 verse 6 and 7, it says, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means cure the guilty, visiting the, in the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children. And to the third and to the fourth what? Generation. When Moses asked God, asked God, I want to know you. I want to show me your glory. Show me your way. God proclaimed to him his what? His character. So knowing God involves knowing who God is, knowing his ways, or glory, or his character. And when we know his character, what does that lead us to? When we know his character, what does that lead us to? If we read first, we will be reading Titus, the book of Titus, chapter 1. Titus chapter 1, verse 16. It says, They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work, what? Unto every good work, what? What? Disobedient. What, what, what does that mean? That we profess to do what? We profess to know God, but in what? What are we? That means we do not keep commandments. So the third thing in knowing God, we should keep what? We should keep his commands. And what must I do really to know God in me? What must I do to know God in me? Yes, go to Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2, we begin from verse 3.
and it says, verse 3 up to 5. Yeah, if thou Christ after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if you seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hidden treasure, then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of who? And find the knowledge of God. So, what should we do if we want more God? Pardon? What should we do if we want no God intimately? We have to cry aloud, how to seek him, and how do we seek him? Hello? Have I left you? Are we together? Yes. So can we know who God is? Or how, how does he be himself to us? Let's read first John. First John chapter 5. How does God do this to us? The first letter of John, chapter 5, verse 20, it says, And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may do what? Are you following me? It says, and you know that the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding that we may do what? We may, we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even in his Son, Jesus Christ, which is the true God and the Son of God. So the only way we can know God is through who? Is through his Son, who? Jesus Christ. That is the only way we can know God. And how do we know? How, how do we how does Jesus show us God? It's through the what? It's through reading the Bible. And what is the only thing that we can glory in? What is the only thing that we can do? Many people glory in whatever they have, their riches, their what, but you and me, what are we to glory in? Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23. And 24. It says, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. <coughs> uh, as, you, as you are here, some people are saying that, uh, in fact, most of us, we pass through that system of education. And most of us, we still treasure it. But we are coming to the knowledge of knowing that that is what we are giving this name, that kind of education most of us treasure. It is Babylonian what? Babylonian education. We have to seek for true education. But Jeremiah is saying that. Uh, let not the wise man go in what? In his wisdom. When you go to those Babylonian schools, my dear, when you get the first, when you pass a class, you wish to continue to another class. When you get a certificate, you wish to add on another what? 
and the one is consecutive, you say, ah, now this first certificate is not required. I want to earn as much as my colleague is earning. Let me go back and do what? And start this. And when you get those papers, I had my brother say he has what three papers? What what? See what? Those papers are we know them. When we have when we accumulate them, then we you feel that you are satisfied in life. And the people who look at you think that maybe you are, you have wisdom, you are bright. What? But Jeremiah is telling us, let not the wise man glory in what? In his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his what? In his riches. And indeed, those things make us feel proud. When you have money, my dear, ah, whatever you want, it just comes. If you want to go where you go, if you want to do what, because money is there. And indeed, why do we go to school? Those people are school. Most people, they go there to look for money. They accumulate papers to get what? To get money. Because when you have a lot of papers, when promotion comes, they consider you first before bringing in some. But Jeremiah is, is telling us riches is nothing, might is nothing, wisdom is what? Verse 24 says, But let him that glories, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth who? And knoweth me. That is what God wants from us. It says, But let him that glories, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. What does God like in? It lies if I say that I know him. And what does it mean for me to fear the Lord? What does it mean for me to know God? It's to fear him. So this has been just an introduction of who our God is. The first message, the first of the three messages is telling us that we should know who our God is. We should go back and know who is He really. He wants us to have an intimate relations with Him. And if we don't do that, then Isaiah says that we shall be done what? We shall be destroyed because we have rejected God. And that is what God requires of us to glory that we know who we know. Him. My humble prayer here by the time we live here, we shall be knowing who our God is. I know maybe some of us here also believe in this one God being three persons. That is the Trinity. <coughs> and others don't believe that. They believe that there are three individuals who is not one. Because the Trinity says this three is one. And uh, I have uh, my brothers who said that no, the God has, has three separate individuals, not three making one. 
I think by the time we shall be living here, we shall be knowing who our God is. The Bible is saying that if we know him, then that is what God does. God bless us with those words. Let's meet down for a part of prayer. Kind and loving Father, we thank you for you have been with us through the day from morning up to now, hearing your word. We thank you because you've shown us that it is important to you for us to know you, that we may come before you knowing who you are and knowing your ways. Father, now as we are going for our rest over the night, be with us. And as we come again in the morning to hear your word, be with us. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ and Savior.